Hi there. I'm Taylor Jackson, and we're in Japan. Canon R6 II. I'm feeling a little disoriented. How about you? <laughs> check, check, teach yourself checks. We're here in Japan again. Are you sick of Japan? Because I'm not. I'll go back right now. Let me know. I'm there. We'll be back in Ginza eating shabu shabu with Magic and Marshall. Come through. Good morning. Today, we're going for a walk around with the all new Canon R6 Mark II. We're gonna go do a shot that I've wanted to get for a little while now. There's a staircase that leads up to Tokyo Tower. I was in bed, woke up at four in the morning, looked out the window and saw that Tokyo Tower is fully lit up. Last night it was kind of partially lit up and I uh, thought that I would walk the 35 minutes and go get that photo. And I don't know what else we're getting up to today. I think Pierre, Jason Vong, Vivian, myself, Marshall, and Farouk, you might know him as iPhoneDo. I think we're all going to Team Labs, which is a pretty cool installation. And uh, I'll be bringing this, but I think that's all we have planned for today so far. Let's go see a, a staircase about a tower. I'll also mention that the 35 f1.8 is the only lens that I actually have with me here. Uh, I might borrow something from Marshall, but I don't know. I, I like this lens a lot. I like this kit as a travel kit, so I'll probably just stay on it. Early morning walks in Tokyo are one of my favorite things to do in Tokyo. Really just walking around anytime, actually. I typically walk between, I would say, 15 to 25 kilometers, or for people talking to miles, it's not that impressive, I guess it's like 10 to 15 miles a day. But when you're there for a full week, it becomes a lot. I like the convenience stores are open 24 hours a day, you can always go in, you get your coolish, get your can of coffee, go for your walk, no one's around, everything's quiet. It's a nice time. Look, big orange tower, hot dog. It's time to get excited. Also, all these images edited with my preset pack, CL2022 is what I've used on all the images in this video. We made it to the spot, but I don't know. Too much lead up for kind of a dumb image. Sorry for making you go all this way. As you can see, I have, well, I'm wearing the tower as a hat. And now it's five in the morning. Blue hour is in about, I think about an hour. 8,000 ISO. What I like about this camera is that they've just fixed all the things that were wrong on the original one, which is mostly overheating. And the high ISO performance is nice. It's lovely. It's really an incredible camera. In terms of a wedding photography camera or a portrait photography, family photography camera, travel camera, it really is a very versatile tool. And it would probably be my recommendation in the Canon lineup now if you need something that's really, really high megapixels, obviously the R5 at the current time of recording this video is the camera to go for. Or if you need something more geared towards sports, maybe an R3. But I would say for the general public, myself included, I would say that the Canon R6 Mark II is the camera to go for. And I am incredibly happy with this purchase or this purchase I gave it. This is my wife Lindsay's camera, which I don't know if I mentioned in this video, but I, I bought it and then I took it on the trip and then I brought it home and gave it to her. Lindsay is going to be using this camera as a main camera for her wedding photography business, commercial, and families, and everything that she does. I'll likely be using it a little bit as well. That 4K60 no crop in this, this package is very, very nice. Then I met up with Marshall and production got a little bit better. We are out here today with the Canon R6 Mark II in Japan. Although it doesn't really look like Japan, but I promise it'll start looking a little bit more, more Japanese soon. The Canon R6 Mark II is basically the Canon R6, but they've just fixed everything that was wrong with the original one. They made it out of plastic. There was no way for heat to get out. Now they put metal inside, I think. I haven't opened it up to see, but it does handle heat a heck of a lot better. I've run some tests and there's no issues any longer. Hello. How's it going? Online. What's up, dude? We come in peace. We're in line. Another feature if you're a wedding photographer that you might enjoy is I don't know if you can see the screen here, but we have Farouk in eye and face detect mode, but I can go to Jason and I can go left and right. So it will allow you to select multiple different faces with left and right arrows, which is very, very helpful for wedding days. And if you're a portrait shooter or a family shooter and you wanna select the exact person that you wanna focus on, it's nice. Life is nice now.
Team Lab, if you are not familiar with it, it's kind of this weird multi-sensory experience. They built a bunch of cool rooms and there's you go in through a waterfall and because everything is mirrors that you stand on and everything is reflective surfaces, it's actually literally just to clean your feet. We're here at Team Lab. Things are a little bit weird. It's dark. It's dark and there's water. That's my review so far. My feet feel refreshed. Japanese enough. It's a very normal environment that we found ourselves in. Exposure and white balance, and here's a nightmare. This is a room for still photos, and that's it. <laughs> Here we are. This is the ultimate test of any camera, I would assume. Low ISO, high ISO. We're in the dark now. Now it's real bright. Look, it's Pierre. We honestly spent too long in this room. But soon. It was time to move on to the fish room where they project fish from the ceiling and you can kick them and touch them. We're not there yet. I started this voiceover a little bit too soon. So now I'm just stalling for time while we walk to the next room. And you'll never guess it, but the floor of the next room is in fact water. But it's marginally warmer water than the last water. Honestly, it's really cool. There's some tourist activities that are touristy and dumb. This one is touristy, but fun. You get to hit some balls, you get to see some things in the 360 immersive environment. You get these potatoes, you can ding them and they make the music change in the room. And then these orchids come down from the ceiling and they go back up. That's my summary of Team Lab. Hope you enjoyed it. Here's another one. And uh, this concludes our time here at Team Lab with the flowers from the ceiling. On to what could be next? Do you know what's next? <laughs>
So, it might seem ridiculous to be able to do a long exposure like that. I think two seconds I'm pretty comfortable with because I can shoot two seconds, just two points like this, and I don't have to use my face on the screen. But what it will do is it'll help you clean up scenes. People moving in the background, people moving, you take a photo, it's one slash two hundredth of a second, you're gonna freeze all those people. However, if you shoot it at two seconds, all the people disappear. So whether you want to include the people or you want the people to go away, you get, you get the choice now. You don't kind of bring a tripod, so you, you get in the space and you're just like, hey, this would be a nice photo. You're able to execute that on location rather than preparing too heavily for it. Look at that, two second exposure on my favorite mega Don Quixote. Let's go get some garlic bread. So the Canon R6 Mark II is without a doubt one of the best hybrid cameras ever made. It will be replacing our Canon R6s because there are some issues when it comes to overheating. The R6 original didn't do so well, especially if you're trying to do 4K 60 or you can see the, the rolling shutter in that last shot is not so great. Also, just generally the warble in the IBIS. It's really challenging. It makes me feel a little bit ill. We do what we can to clean it up in post-production, but it is much better to just shoot it on the Canon R6 II where that warble is a little bit cleaned up and you can use EF lenses if you want. High ISO, great. Usability in general, just great. In terms of a travel camera, it does everything that I will ever need. I will typically bring, I only have my 35 with me on this trip, but I will typically bring maybe the 24 to 70 F 2.8 that also has IS on it. So you get some additional lens stabilization. And then when it comes to weddings, I will typically have the 85 millimeter F 1.4 Samyang autofocus lens on my main camera or the 50 F 1.2 Canon L. And then on my second camera body, either the 24 F 1.8 or the 35 F 1.8 that you've been seeing through most of this video. There were some 85 shots sprinkled in there, like that one right there, that's an 85. 85 or 35, only lenses you're getting on this trip. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you like this video. And I'll see you next time. There's some stuff on the screen if you want to watch it. You can go do that next.